All right, welcome back to Gregory Boxing. In this segment, we're gonna go over how to land a knockout punch. This segment was requested by one of our YouTube su subscribers. I'd like to thank uh, Haram Sharma. Before we talk about how to land a knockout punch, right, we have to go to the anatomy of a knockout. All right, so what happens or what occurs when a knockout happens? Your brain slams up against its skull, right, and your nervous system shuts down for a second right, and it reboots or it resets. Essentially what you're asked to do is how do I land a punch that is so devastating, right, that their brain smashes against the inside of their skull, right, and their nervous system shuts down. For that to happen, there's a couple of key target areas. Number one is the chin, and number two is the temples. There's only been one man that I've ever known in my lifetime that told you that he was gonna knock you out, and he came out and he knocked you out, right, that's Mike Tyson. So if you don't have Mike Tyson power, you're gonna have to set this punch up. All right, so when you set that punch up, whether it's a loop, whether it's a hook, or whether it's an uppercut, you have to throw it meaningfully. Your murderous intentions, right, when you throw it, is to knock an individual out. You can't just sit back, throw it, and hope for the best. All you're really gonna do is piss somebody off. So if you're gonna practice a knockout punch at home, right, or on the bag, right, you're gonna get your whole body into that punch, right, and you're gonna throw it. Most knockouts occur Right, you're just out there doing your job and you catch your opponent by surprise. Okay, the punches that hurt are the ones that you never see coming. And if you think about it, these, right, they have a good potential coming in this way for you to not see them and then the one that comes from underneath. So my recommendation is if you're gonna work on how to throw a knockout punch, it's either gonna be the five, the four, the three, or the six. All right, so you're gonna have to set it up. Unless you're Mike Tyson, you have one punch knockout power, you're gonna have to set that punch up. What ends up happening is with the knockout, okay, you'll usually see the head snap back, right? And then you see the, the, the little wiggles, right? And then that's usually your key to jump on them. That's more along the lines of how a real knockout happens. Very rarely is it just a one punch knockout. There's plenty of video out there. If CompuBox kept the numbers, it would be my personal opinion that more knockouts come from your lead hook right because that thing creeps around your glove you can't see it coming it hits you and before you know it you're on wiggle street and and that's usually you're hurt and then they usually end up finishing you a one punch knockout is a rare occurrence and it's usually uh, ascribed to people that have one punch knockout power and there's very few of those humans walking around the earth if i'm looking at hurting coach jason okay <clears throat> i'm gonna set this up all right so your first focus should be on the three. More knockouts, right? You can go through all the highlights on, on the internet and you're gonna see most knockouts occur from the left hook or the lead hook, right? Your three. All right, so you, you'll see like how that comes around because it can either land here on the temple or it can land on the chin, right? You have to have a good three. You have to have a good three in the first place if you think you can knock somebody out. But as I'm throwing it, right, I'm getting it to come around this glove. When I'm throwing it for power, Right? My thumb is up, my fist is as high as my elbow, and my elbow is as high as my shoulder. So that that punch, the momentum of that punch is never broken. Meaning I don't hit here and come through. I come around. All right? So if I can land on the chin, that's great. And if I can land on the temple, that's great. All right? And it's the same in reverse. If I'm throwing that six, I'm going right for the temple or I'm going for the chin. If it's an uppercut, well boom, well boom. Okay? A couple of key points. If you're trying to knock somebody out, right, you can't throw that punch and hope for the best. You're throwing it with murderous intent, right? And that means that I'm bringing my whole body. When I throw this punch, boom, I'm bringing it. Whoa, boom, I'm bringing it, right? I'm trying to finish him, right? I may have hurt him, I'm trying to knock him out. I'm not trying to piss him off by slapping him. There's a hundred ways that you could set up a knockout punch, right? But you have to be able to see it, interpret it in your head and respond the right way. But going over the math, right, if you're just looking at it from an analytical standpoint or you're listening at it from um, uh, statistics, okay, the left hook is going to be your primary left uh, weapon, right, to get the knockout started, right, and then it's just going to be up to you to jump on them and finish them. Temples and chin, those are the best target areas when you're focusing on trying to knock somebody out. Always have it in your head, right, just do your job, meaning like you're out there, you're throwing punches, you're working hard, right, and the knockout naturally occurs. Very rarely can somebody make it happen. That, that title is reserved for Mike Tyson. He's the only individual that I've ever seen publicly state he is going to knock you out and in short order walks across the ring and does it. Agreed? Agreed. All right. All right. That's how to land a knockout punch.